In this video, I'll take a look at the ascending triangle. It's a pattern that shows consolidation, but it also shows that buyers are coming in and becoming more and more aggressive. Think of it as pressure mounting on the market to go to the upside, but a point where the sellers are being stubborn. Somebody eventually loses. And the idea is that because the buyers continue to be aggressive, it will eventually be the sellers that lose when we take off. You can see I have a little bit of a trend line here and a flat line here. You can see that every time we pulled back, the buyer stepped up. Their effort could not break above, but once they do, we take off. It's worth noting that there are a couple of things about the ascending triangle that you need to know, and this is true with all triangles. You want to see the market break out before the 80% to the apex level. So before about there on a triangle. Furthermore, you can take the highest part of the triangle to the lowest part of the triangle and use that as a measuring stick. So in this case, you can see that when we broke out, that was your first target and you hit it within two candles. We did go further. That's not a huge surprise. That quite often happens to be the case. So why would you take this candlestick pattern after a sell-off like that well you wouldn't until you get confirmation but even though we sold off as drastically as we did in the kiwi dollar sing dollar pair we had been in a pretty significant uptrend uptrend previously there's probably going to be a fibonacci level involved so you have the 50 percent where people started to pick up the new zealand dollar you notice over here, we have an ascending triangle that actually is a trend change. We fell pretty hard, turned around, but by then, you know, you have a market that definitely had been uh, struggling. And in fact, it's actually just underneath this area here. So something fundamental may have changed when we approach that. Again, you have the 80% level you know, we didn't break beyond that. And if it does, typically what you have is just the busted pattern and we go sideways. You can take your measured move here and you can see we clearly got that and then took off much higher than that. With these triangles, you would put your stop loss on the other side of the uptrend line, the, the support line and just let it rip. Now, you can also put it somewhere in the middle if you want, if you want to be a little bit more cautious with your stop loss, but generally it's one or the other with traders uh, using these indications of building bullish pressure. It can happen on any time frame, but the higher the time frame, the more likely you are to see success because it takes a lot more effort to make that happen. Once the resistance gets broken, it's a bit of a FOMO trade. 